Hallelujah. Amen and amen. You are welcome to GCF. I will welcome all our cyber audience. Welcome into the sanctuary of the Lord. May the Lord listen to your prayers. May the Lord hear your prayers. May the Lord respond to the requests of your life. And may the Lord touch your lives in Jesus' name. Amen. You may please take your seats in God's presence. Hallelujah. Wonderful to have you in church one more time. Wonderful to see your beautiful and handsome faces in God's house. Amen. And I trust that God speaks and addresses the needs of your life as we go through his words today. Last week, by God's grace, we started looking at the sheep, the sheepfold and the shepherd. And we quoted from Psalm chapter number, let me be very sure, 100 verse 3, he said, Know ye that the Lord is God? It is he that has made us, who has made us God. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So we said that we belong to God. You belong to God and I belong to God. You are no man's property. You are the property of God. Amen. God owns you and you belong to him. And he describes us as what? As sheep. And like I said last week, Jesus is the chief shepherd. And I am the under shepherd. Amen. And I have a responsibility to your life. So God willing, we shall look at the responsibility of the shepherd to you as a sheep. But today we want to focus on the sheepfold. Hallelujah. So when there is sheep, the sheep, there is a sheepfold or a pen or a shelter where the sheep is kept. So let's go to John chapter 10, reading from verse number 1. The gospel of John chapter number 10, verse number 1. And Jesus speaking, so if your Bible is a very good Bible, it will be red lettered. It said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some way, the said is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So like I said earlier on, the sheepfold is the shelter, the pen, or if you permit me, the house of the sheep. The place where the sheep are kept. And I want to submit to you that that sheep fold is the church. The church is the place where people are kept. Sometimes you hear people say that I am a Christian, but I don't go to church. You are not a Christian. You cannot be a Christian at large. Because if you are a Christian, you need to have a shepherd who feeds you, who takes care of you, and who ministers to you. Somebody said, my heart is pure, so I, ca I can serve God anywhere. You are lying. You have not read the scriptures. You don't know what the Bible says. You cannot be a Christian at large. You cannot just worship God in your heart. What am I saying so? I am saying so because Sheep are such that they don't know how to take care of themselves. So there is a problem which says that a cast sheep is actually a pitiful sight. When a sheep falls down, when a sheep is in crisis, it is a pitiful sight. So you cannot tell me, Pastor, as for me, I worship God in my heart. So if I don't even go to church, I am even better than the people who go to church. You are a liar. And you don't speak the truth. Every sheep has a shelter. Every sheep has a pain. Every sheep has a church. 
So there must be a place. The Bible says our fellowship is with the Father and with one another. So you cannot only have a relationship with the Father. It is not sufficient. It is not enough. You cannot practice Christianity that way. Is somebody listening to me? I need you for Christianity to take place. So Christianity cannot take place in isolation. Without the brethren, you, how do you practice love? I am there. I love myself. Oh, how I love myself and how I love Jesus. No, you can't love yourself alone. You also have to do what? Love the brethren. Is somebody listening to me? I pray for you. You pray for me. I can't be that. I am in the body of Christ. As for me, I don't believe in going to church. I don't have any shelter over me. It means you are a lost sheep. You are a lost sheep. So your sight will be pitiful. As we continue, you will see. You see, the sheepfold offers care. Say care. I know your face, nose marks wouldn't permit your voice to be heard, but it's okay. The sheepfold offers care. Number one, it also offers protection. Say protection. And then it also, uh, it also offers abundant supply. Abundant what? Supply. Abundant what? So, so three things a, a, a sheepfold offers you. Number one, care. Number two, protection. Number three, abundant supply. Someone will say, Pastor Callis, how do you know? The, Psalm 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not, I shall not. The word want in the original language is lack. So you shall not lack for care. You shall not lack for covering or protection. You shall not lack for financial want. You shall not lack financially. You shall not lack spiritually. You shall not lack socially. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So you cannot be under a shepherd and lack. If you are under a shepherd and you lack, check your life. You are not connecting properly. So how does the church ensure that you receive care? How does the church ensure you receive covering and protection? And how does the church ensure that you are abundantly supplied? Now listen to me. The fact that you have a lot of money doesn't mean you are abundantly supplied. Abundantly being supplied doesn't mean just a lot of money. Because if you continue with Psalm 23, it didn't only talk about money. It talks about where you are taking to drink water. A, a same stream of water. A place where there is greenery for you to sumptuously be fed. Amen. And if it talks in times of danger, yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So there is a time when you will need comfort and consolation. There is a time when we all go through the vicissitudes, the challenges, the difficulties of life. Now listen to me. When a woman becomes pregnant, isn't it a miracle? Oh, come work with me. Isn't it a miracle? Isn't it beautiful? Mary became pregnant. But when did Mary give birth? After two weeks? After two months? But how many months? Now, what is God telling you? Elizabeth, after she had waited for so long, eventually, she got pregnant. Was that a miracle? Was that a miracle? Was that beautiful? But when did she give birth? Now listen to this carefully. The fact that God has blessed you, the fact that God has done a miracle for you, doesn't mean you will not go through process. That is our problem. That is our problem. Every one of us would have to go through what? Process. And for you to go through the process, you need the presence of a shepherd in your life. To stand with you. To encourage you. To speak the word of the Lord to your life. And there are so many Christians. They don't want to go through process. 
But the bungee or the cassava must be placed on fire. The fact that you have cassava doesn't mean you have fufu. And that is our problem. I'm a child of God, so everything must be working okay, okay for me. No, you have to go through a process. Even after you have delivered your baby, you can't say, I have a baby, praise the Lord, and that is the end. No, you have to raise the baby. Am I right? You have to send the child to school. The child must be educated. The child must be fed. The child must be sheltered. But the mistake we make is, I am a new creation. I am a brand new man. All things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's what I am. I am a new creation. I am a brand new man. So God, today, I claim Mercedes Benz. In the name of Jesus. I claim a six bedroom house. In the name of Jesus. I claim US visa. I mean, how many of you rightfully in your mind give your car to your baby to drive? God is also smart. God has to work on us. So he said, your presence will be with me. Yet, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Experience is something you can never buy from a shop. I don't know a shop anywhere in the world where you can go and say, today I have come. I am coming to buy experience. There is no shop like that. So the things we go through is what gives us experience. The things we go through is what makes us strong. Amen? I don't want to go through any difficulty because I am a, who told you? He said, when you go through the fire, I will be with you so the fire will not kindle upon you. He said, when you go through the waters, I will be with you. So ladies and gentlemen, children of God, we will go through stormy times. Even Jesus went through the storm. And who tells you, you will not go through the storm? I thought marriage is so sweet. I thought marriage is so wonderful. You will go through challenges. And the challenges you go through is what makes the marriage stronger. Amen? But listen to this carefully. If he lifts his hand, any man, if you are going out with a man, and he begins to slap you or hit you, or lift his hand on you. Walk out of that marriage quickly. Pastor Kali says so. And the man who lifts his hand on a woman is not a man. He is not a man. That's, I, I, it doesn't matter. I will marry him like that. When I marry him, he will change. He will not change. Once he has started beating you, when he has not put on the wedding, put the wedding ring on you, when you marry him, he will subject you to more beatings. And nobody marries. Uh, pastor said we will learn from our experience. So it doesn't matter. Don't learn from such an experience. Amen. Walk out of the marriage. Tell your parents, my parents, I, I don't want you to die in that marriage. You don't have to marry and die. It's not God's portion for you. Amen. So how do we make sure that we receive the care we need, the protection we need, and the supply of our needs? Now, you need to understand that sheep are emotional. Sheep are what? Emotional. Sheep are what? Emotional. Now, unfortunately, in our part of the world, we are raised and taught to suppress our emotions. Bermanson. Isn't that what we say? So keep your emotions. Oh, you are too emotional. Why are you emotional like that? Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Emotion is part of our being. And as we go on, I will show you. We, you see, when we are physically sick, we go to the hospital for the doctor to attend to us. Am I right? Sometimes we become emotionally sick also. Sometimes we become financially sick. And the way we need medical doctors, the same way we need emotional doctors and mind doctors. We call them psychiatrists and psychologists. But in our part of the world, it's like 
If you go and see a psychiatrist or a psychologist, it means what but dumb, you are mad. It is not true. I said it is not true. If we have to see a pastor, we go and see the pastor and we want not counseling, but prayer. So let me pour oil on you or buy oil and I will solve your emotional problems. It is not so. So remember last week we said that the sheep lack direction. So listen to this carefully. What they lack in direction, they get it by depending on each other by forming alliances. Because they lack direction, they depend on each other. So if sheep are together and one person takes the left, it is likely that the others may follow. Because they trust that one. They trust themselves. That is why when we come to church, you are in the choir. Within the choir, there are certain people you connect and you gel with. Am I right or correct? So we begin to connect with certain people in church. It is normal. It is okay. Hallelujah. So we make that up through what? Loyalty. So among the sheep, they create loyalty. They create friendship. And then they also learn to recognize the voice of the shepherd. If you are a sheep and you don't know the voice of your shepherd, you are lost. Because Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 27, he said, I know my sheep and my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. They hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. So every sheep must recognize the voice of its shepherd. I saw a video of this. There is this large head of flock. And then some people were asked to call the sheep. They called the sheep and called the sheep. The sheep didn't mind. They were just grazing, eating. Until the shepherd whistled in a certain way. The moment the shepherd whistled, they all started coming together to the, to the shepherd. They began to follow the shepherd. They began to do what? Follow the shepherd. Apostle Paul said, imitate me as I do what? As I imitate Christ. And I often tell church members, if I am doing something and it is not biblical, don't follow it. Amen? You follow me as I follow Christ. If I am not following Christ, don't follow me as your pastor. I will mislead you. I will take you to the wrong place. But so long as I'm imitating Christ, so long as I'm following the footsteps of Christ, keep following me. Amen? So, let's put our emotions in check and in balance. Let's form, create friendships. Amen? Because we will depend on each other as we go along. We will rely on each other as we go along. That's why we sang, I need you and you need me. We are all part of God's body. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. When we talk of love, love has not got anything to do with uh, come to my house. No, no. It's more than come to my house. Amen. Love means I think about you. I pray for you. I trust and believe God with you. Hallelujah. Number two, sheep are valuable. Sheep are what? Because sheep is an investment. Whenever you buy a sheep and you begin to rear or raise them, it's an investment. So listen to this. You are the investment of God. Say, I am the investment of God. What did God invest in you? He invested the blood of Jesus. You are worth, we are coming to celebrate Easter. Easter is not about an egg or chocolate. It is about the fact that Jesus took your sinful state. That's why on the cross he cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God forsook Jesus at that point in time because Jesus had taken your sin. Jesus had taken my sin and God cannot stand sin. So he deserted his own son. You are worth the blood of Jesus. No man died for 
you. It's Jesus who died for you. So you are God's investment. Somebody said, Pastor, how did you know? Isaiah 61 verse 3. Isaiah 61 verse 3. It says, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. Beauty for what? Beauty for what? So that is, I, I, I observed that the moment people start coming to church, they begin to look handsome and beautiful. Christianity brings out your real beauty. Say, Pastor, what are you talking about? If you are someone who talked by heart or did your thing by heart, in no time, you begin to carry yourself like a gentleman. A pastor who planted a church up in the north spoke about how suddenly people came to church and they will be going to church wearing their shirt and their tie. So parents began to encourage their children to go to that church because they became gentlemen and ladies. Hallelujah. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. So if you are mourning, it will give you the oil of joy. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the planting of the Lord. They might be called what? The planting of the Lord. The planting of who? Calistego. The planting of GCFI. But the planting of who? God. God is the one who planted you. If you believe God planted you here. Question. How many trees have you seen walking in town before? If God planted you here, then you must be here. Until he, 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 he removes you from here and takes you elsewhere. You are the planting of God. That he might be glorified. Have you seen that? God planted you here in glory so that he will glorify you. Say, I, will, I am glorified. Hallelujah. So you are, the, you, are, you are the investment of God. Psalm 144 verse 13. 144. Just still trying to let you know that you are the planting of the Lord. And that is what makes you valuable. That is what makes you valuable. Amen. Someone says that if you don't know your value, you will be sold for cheap. If you don't know your value, you will be sold for cheap. For cheap. It was, a story was told about how when the white people came to East Africa. And when they, if they saw diamond, the people of East Africa were playing with diamond like stones. Because they didn't know the value of what they were playing with. So the white men asked them, bring all these stones and we'll give you some money. Then they gathered the stones. They, we, 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 we throw it at each other. So if you want it, we'll gather it for you. It was later before they discovered that it was diamond and of more value than what was being given to them. Do you know your value? Do you know your value? You need to know your value. Don't underestimate yourself. Don't shortchange yourself. Say so that our bonds may be full. Supplying all kinds of produce. That our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our field. So God expects you to be productive. God expects you to be fruitful and multiply. That is what we call the divine mandate. For you to be fruitful. It doesn't mean produce a lot of children. If God gives you the grace, produce. Amen. But not only that. You must be productive intellectually. You must be productive emotionally. You must be productive financially. And in that area, I pray for you. Because you see, it worries me that when we look at Form 100, there is no African. The only African is Dangote. From Nigeria. Apart from Dangote, I don't know anybody else. In Ghana, we don't show our wealth. So we don't even know, really know the richest person in Ghana. We don't know. By statistics, we don't know who is the richest person in Ghana. But we should know it so that people can be inspired and encouraged to look up to these heroes and draw inspiration. Amen? 
So he said that our sheep may bring forth. So God expects you to bring forth. God expects you to be productive. God expects you to increase and multiply in whatever you do. But because we don't believe in process. On Friday, I shared with the church on how a certain fisherman went on fishing expedition and caught a huge fish. Huge fish. No, it's a real story. It happened in river, one of the states in Nigeria, river states. Okay, there is river states in Nigeria. Am I right? So if you can check. When he got the fish, he's a good man. So he shared the fish with the entire village. The moment they finished eating, then they discovered that the fish they ate is worth 2.5 million US dollars. The blue maribo fish. Rare fish. It cost what? 2.5 million dollars. But they are eating it. Listen, church. It is not every food you eat. There was a seed. Say seed. We always remember your seed. Don't eat every money you get. Take it from me. Don't eat or spend every money you get. It doesn't matter how much you get. Listen to me carefully. If you believe in paying 10% of your tithe, 10 or more percent of your tithe, believe in also setting 10% or more in an investment for yourself. For yourself. For yourself. Because a rainy day will come. A day will come. Who said Corona will stop us at a point in time from going to work? People lost their job. They woke up. They went to work on Friday. Monday, they have no business. I read about a lady who has a, an MBA. She has a bachelor in, of science in management and MBA in human resource management. But do you know what she does? She fries yam. Why? Because she lost her job and being smart and not being a lazy person. Instead of sitting down and waiting for a man to bring a Range Rover or a Mercedes Benz, she decided to sell yam. And because of her background as a human resource person, she could connect with her customers. So the customers keep coming back. They keep, so pastor, can you sell yam? I know someone who sold ice water and made a business of it. So you can sell yam if you only know how to set some money aside. Do deliberate susu 10 cities a day, 10 cities a day, 10 cities a day. At the end of the month, when you take it, go and put it in treasury bills. Or in a common fund. I won't advertise for anybody. Are you getting the point? Make sure that at every given time, there is a money you are setting aside that you don't touch. Know your own value. Let me show you some more of your value. The Lord expects fruitfulness and productivity from us. That is why in the parable of the talent, he said, Cast, bind ye the unprofitable servant. The what? Unprofitable servant. The what? Unprofitable servant. Hand and foot and cast him into hell. Bind the unprofitable So God won't profit from you. John chapter 10, verse number 10. A very popular scripture we all know. The thief cometh not, but to do what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Jesus said, I have come that you might have what? And have it what? Now, what does that mean? What is abundant life? They said, it's only the cat who has nine lives. Are we cats? No. So, what does it mean to have life in abundance? What does it mean? Now, listen to this carefully. Out of the sheep, okay, you can get milk. Say milk. Now, what does milk do? What does milk do? It nourishes people when they drink it. Am I right? So, out of you, people must receive nourishment. Somebody must benefit from you. Number two, do we... Where do we get leather? From the sheep. Am I right? And out of leather, what do we do? We make shoes, belts, bags, 
Am I right? Somebody must benefit from you as leader. Are you producing abundantly? Have you heard of wool, woolen jacket? Woolen trousers? Woolen whatever? Where do we get the wool? From the sheep. And the woolen jacket helps to keep you what? Warm. Especially in the temperate regions. Even here, this morning, it's feeling a bit warm. So if you are we wearing a woolen jacket like what I am wearing, you will be feeling cool. Amen? Amen. And you keep a little warm. Are you being productive? Now, sheep also produces offspring. Sheep produces what? Offspring. Emma. Or wuba saba 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 saba. So they can increase and they can multiply. So you can increase and multiply. Being a mentor to somebody, there must be someone in your life that you are mentoring. Hmm? There is this young lady, Danaba Anamwa, I doff my heart for her. I have come to, people used to insult. In fact, the first time I encountered her, she was then at GBC. And she came to, read, she was the continuity announcer. The first time she did the announcement, oh my goodness. I said, who is this girl? Where is she coming from? I mean, she messed up the whole thing. Then the next time she was in TV3, and I saw, began to see her improving. Newscasting after newscasting. New, her English was getting better all the time. And recently, she did something, it was so beautiful. She was driving in traffic, and then one of these vendors can say, oh, no, no, take, let's take selfie with you. But, and as they were chatting, the guy said, oh, I love journalism. Nana said, Get, come and see me. So the guys went over. She went out with them for lunch. And then had the boy admitted, admitted into a school. She has a school where she trains to be a journalist. And she has trained the gentleman. The other day, I was watching the gentleman on Ago TV. And I, look, I said, look at this handsome young man. He was on the streets. Now look at him. He has become a celebrity. This is what God has called you and I to do. To take ordinary people and turn them into celebrities for the Lord. And I, I applaud her. I thank God for what she did. And she's still doing some more. So listen to me carefully. There must be someone that you mentor. There must be somebody who looks up to you. Not only that, do we, when, 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 when do we get mutton? Mutton, tolobifi. Amika tolobifi, there you got it. From the sheep, am I right? Somebody must be enjoying your, you see, last week I told you, some of you, you have a smile you wear. Somebody must enjoy that smile. You know, we have something we call the gift of presence. There are some of you, once I see you in church, I'm very happy. Are, are you getting the point? Once I see you, your presence ministers to me. Your physical presence, it ministers to me. So there are other people who benefit from your physical presence. So people must enjoy you. People must benefit from you. So when Jesus said, we, should, we will have life and have it in abundance, this is what the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to. That through versatility, we will minister to many people. Versatility means in diverse ways. In different ways, we minister to people. Amen. So be useful to humanity, ladies and gentlemen. Be useful to humanity. Be a blessing to humanity. Let somebody benefit from you. Fine, keep your money. We keep it and ain't never see it. Jesus said, it is more blessed to what? To give than what? To receive. If I give you something, what will you say to me? Eh? God bless me. So I'm getting blessed. I am getting blessed. I am getting blessed. When we talk of blessing, it's not just, not, it's not just the quantum of money in your bank account. That's not just blessing. It encapsulates many things that God does for you. Amen. That accident God delivered. You think you are so because of the color of your skin. You are yellow, CC. You did so for corner. So God preserved your life. No. No. 
is because of the disposition of your heart. Amen. The third thing we can look at as far as how we are cared for in the sheepfold is concerned. Sheep cannot take care of themselves when wounded. Listen to this carefully. Sheep can't care for themselves when wounded. When the sheep gets hurt, they don't have a system to cater for themselves. So look at what the scripture said. Proverbs 25, verse 23. Look at what the scripture said. Proverbs 25. Are you sure that's what is there? So somebody should look for this scripture for me. Be diligent to know the state of your flock and attend to your heads. That's the scripture I'm looking for. I don't know how I got the mixer because I checked and cross-checked. So somebody should check it for me. Who got it? But the point I'm, I want to drive across is that it says be diligent. Diligent means work hard. That is the, that's the reason why the shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. Because he knows the value of the sheep. 27. 27, 23. Okay, thank you. So it's Proverbs 27, 23. I don't know why I put 25 there. Be diligent to know the state of thy flock and look well to thy heads. That is why some of you, when we don't see you for a while, we call you, we message you. It's not because we want anything from you. We are just being diligent as what? Under shepherds. We want to make sure it is okay with you. Amen. So he said, we should be diligent to make sure that you are okay. Not only that. Psalm 23. We all know that one already. Can you shoot it up, uh, Solomon? Uh, let's glance at some five minutes. I should be done in the next five minutes. Proverbs 23. Sorry, Psalm 23. Oh my goodness. Help me, Lord. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Yeah. Quickly, please. He maketh me. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. To feed and be full. He leadeth me beside still waters. Not troubled waters. He restoreth my soul. My mind. With which I think. My emotions. With which I, I, I feel. And my will. With which I make decisions. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So, if you continue, you see all the things that the shepherd does for the sheep. Amen. James chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. It goes on and on and on. You know the story. He leads me. So, every shepherd has a rod. And the rod is to comfort and also to deliver. You, if you look at the shepherd's rod, is, is there is a curve. That curve is used in lifting uh, the, 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 the sheep when they are in danger in a pit. Okay? So, James 5, 13 to 16 says, Is any among you suffering? Now watch this carefully. Is any among you suffering? Let him pray. If you are suffering, do what? If you are suffering, do what? Is anyone cheerful? Let him do what? Sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. The word elders is the same as pastors. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save, will save him. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. He said, do what? If you are sick, call. I've had people call me at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 12 midnight. Ask Pastor Ben, people have called. And this is what we do. That's why we have several pastors. So if I am at a place that I may not be able to reach you, I call Pastor Ben or Pastor Tukwefio or Pastor uh, Ama to reach out to you. 
The fact that I didn't show up doesn't mean I didn't do my work. There was a case where I was around Acho and somebody had been sent to the accident ward at Kolebu unconscious. There was no way. I, by the time I drive from Acho to Kolebu, the person would have died. So I called Pastor Ben and Pastor Ben, so I said, let's pray. So mommy was in the car, the children were in the car, we, all, we prayed till we all got home. When we got home, then I called Pastor Ben. And Pastor Ben said, oh, God has done a miracle. Because when they went, there was no doctor to attend to her. And a doctor who had closed, and he was going home. This is a miracle. The person did an about ten, took the lady straight to the theater, and took care of her, and the lady didn't die. She survived. Because the shepherd were there to do what? To do their job. There was another brother who called, the wife called, that the brother believed he was going to die. So he was calling friends and family members, begging them to take care of his children. So the moment the wife called, I was at home. The closest person was Pastor Tukwefio. So I said, Pastor Tukwefio, go to so and so and anoint the person and pray for the, for the person in the name of the Lord on my behalf. He went and he prayed and the person is alive up to today. So don't rob and deny yourself. Now, as I speak, I speak to every, every area of our lives. Even if you are, you are having emotional challenges, call and talk to some of us. Amen? If you are having issues with your mind, not only physical healing, because I know we go through emotional turmoil. And sometimes all you need is someone to talk to. Please, call one of us. Amen? If you have uncertainties and confusion in your mind, and why do you deny you? Hey, 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 Please, pray a movie. Call us. That is why you are our sheep. That is why you are, we are your shepherd. That is why we are here. But if you keep everything to yourself, you will die alone. And when it happens that way, it begins to make us feel guilty because we didn't get to know what was happening to you to even reach out to you. Is somebody listening to me? So don't die in silence. If somebody, something is troubling you in your marriage, talk to us. If something is troubling you at your workplace, talk to us. It's not everything that is prayer. Sometimes you need a little word of encouragement. Amen? I want to conclude. In the beginning, I said the sheepfold holds you. Number one, care. Number two, Protection and covering. Number three, abundant supply. Am I right? Now, whenever you are in a sheepfold or a church, these three things must happen to you. In, a, in the sheepfold, it's a place where number one, we find empowerment. Say empowerment. Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, I have given you power over all the power of the enemy. So, when you are in a church, ask Am, am, am I being empowered? Am I being what? Empowered. Number two, enablement. Enablement. You must be enabled in that sheepfold. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So you must be what? Enabled. Number three, establishment. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. Isaiah 33, verse 6. So anytime you are in a church, ask yourself, am I being cared for? Am I being covered and protected? Am I being abundantly supplied to? Then ask yourself again, am I getting empowered? Am I being enabled? And am I getting established? God richly bless you. I trust and believe that God spoke to you. And I pray for you that may God strengthen you with might. May God be with you wherever you go. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Man will do his worst. But your God will do his best. You belong to the top. So see you at the top. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Santo.